Okay, gang, let's take a look at this. We're gonna now calculate probabilities for any normal distribution, not just z-scores, not just the standard normal, but any normal distribution. So as I read this problem, be on the listen for what is the variable, okay? So the growth of children can be an important indicator of general levels of nutrition and health. Data suggests that a reasonable model for the probability distribution of the continuous numerical variable x equaling the height of a randomly selected five-year-old child is a normal distribution with a mean of 100 centimeters and a standard deviation of six centimeters. Sketch a picture and shade the appropriate region. What is the proportion of heights between 94 and 112 centimeters? Okay, that is a lot. I'm hoping some buzzwords stand out. All right, the first one that I, I saw here, or that I remember seeing, is the mean. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. And then I got standard deviation. All right, and then normal distribution. All right, my variable in this case was the height of these five-year-old kids. All right, so we see height right here. It even says your height is your x variable. Okay. It is continuous numerical. Height is always continuous numerical. We measure your height, but we know that X has the bell curve. That's its shape. We know right under that peak is 100, and we know we can scale our X axis with the six. So with that, before I even get to this question, let me label and scale this X axis. And I'm gonna go three up, three back in terms of deviations, just to practice. So this is gonna be height, in centimeters, all right, this is my x-axis. All right, so we knew 100 was below the peak. I'm gonna go three up, one, two, three, and three back, one, two, three. So this would be, what, 106, 112. I can add another six, we get 118. If I go three back, we're looking at 94, 88, and 82. And again, you don't always need to put all six ticks, tick marks. I'm just trying to show you how you could scale and label your x-axis if you wanted. All right, so I'm gonna go probability on the y. All right, so I see one of the P words, right? Proportion, percentage, probability. When we get to chapter 10 or chapter nine, p-value. But I want that some probability, and it says heights between 94 and 112. Well, heights is my variable, so I want 94 to 112 inside that parentheses, okay? So like always, let's just start from the inside and work ourselves out. All right. So I wanna go from an X value of 94 to an X value of 112. All right, and in this example, these are falling on integer Z-score values. And what I mean by that is this is a Z-score of negative one, right? Because I was one deviation below the mean. And then we went to a z-score of zero, one, two. So I'm going from a z-score of negative one to a z-score of positive two. So let me shade that area under the curve. And we can do this a couple of ways, all right? I can actually think of how to do this problem three different ways. So let's, let's start with the empirical rule, okay? So I could break down these areas under the curve. And here's what I mean. We knew a bunch of how this breaks down. We know this has 34% of the area under my curve from the empirical rule. This also has 34% of the area under that curve from the empirical rule. All right, because we knew if you went from one deviation below to one deviation above, you would have 68%. And it's been, it's been a minute since we took a look at this interval, but let's refer back to this, this paper, all right? And if we remember from the, the breakdown of all of, of the different areas under that curve, the area between one deviation above and two deviations above is 13.5%. So I also know that this is 13.5%, okay? All right, 
So what I'm going to do is say that this is really 0.34 plus 0.34 plus, what do we have, 0.135. Let's see what that total is. That looks to be about 81.5%. Okay, so there's one way to do it. But I also want to remind us, this one here, 94, this was a z-score of negative 1, right? So let me just put this in here. z equals negative 1, that was when x was 94. z equaling positive 2 was when x was 112. So what you could do, this is the third method, all right? Uh, no, that's a lie. This is the second method. So this is method 1 when we use the empirical rule. Here's method 2. I could say this is equivalent to when z-scores are between negative 1 and 2, okay? If I wanted to do that, if we remember from a couple of examples ago, and I'll, I'll reference it on our trait table, if I ever was on the standard normal curve and I wanted probabilities, I would use normal CDF. So what I could do here, if I wanted to, is I could go normal CDF, And I could say low of negative 1, high of positive 2. And then if you remember for the standard normal curve, the mean is always 0 and the standard deviation is always 1. Always. So then I can go over to my handy dandy calculator and plug that in. So normal CDF, negative 1, Nope, not zero. Negative one to two, that's low to high, and then we have a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one, and I get 0.819. And this is actually a more accurate, because um, the empirical rule is just, our, it's a quick and dirty guess, right? It's approximation, this is, this is exact. So we've got 0.819 here, but it's pretty close, right? You can see that back in the day, before we had these nice calculators, this was pretty close, right? We're within 4,000, so I'd take that. All right, so with the third method, I'm gonna flip over to my calculator on my computer, and I'm gonna show you how you can do the, this third method without converting to z-scores, still using our calculator. So I'll, I'll catch up with you in just a bit. Hey, Math 43, I just wanna show you how to calculate a probability for any normal distribution, not just when we're dealing with z-scores on the standard normal, but just a regular normal. And we've been looking at heights of kids, and we're trying to calculate this probability. What's the probability that x is between 94 centimeters and 112? And you saw me just do it with um, the empirical rule, right? We got this approximation. I also showed you you could convert it to z-scores and use normal CDF. But I, I want to show you how you can use normal CDF and just slightly alter the z-score method. All right, so let's go into our calculator and let's go into second and vars, go down to the normal distribution, okay? And then enter your low and your high for your variable, not when we've converted it to z-score. So let's go 94 to 112, okay? And then let's put in the mean and standard deviation for this specific normal distribution, so 100 and 6. And what your calculator is about to do is with that 100 and that 6, is it'll convert to z-scores for you, so you don't have to worry about any of that. So let's go ahead and hit enter, and we get 0.819. Easy, easy peasy, right? Nothing to it. All right, thanks gang. Bye. All right, so even though we just saw it on our calculators, let's do this again. If I want the probability that x is between 94 and 112, I'm still gonna use normal CDF, but instead of needing to convert to z-scores, I'll just use my numbers, right? Low was 94, high was 112, the mean this time was 100, and the standard deviation was six. And when you see that play out, right, normal CDF, uh, 94 to 112, 106, right? And then we get the exact same number there. So I've got 0.819. All right, so your calculator can get you through this much faster. And this is the way I'm gonna use from here on in. We've got technology, let's use it. So if you look 
in that trait table under the normal distribution column, you see how to calculate probabilities use normal CDF. And I want to be clear, this is just an example. It's not saying always go greater than. I, it just for the um, it, for example 12, I, I didn't go greater than. I didn't use a number and then infin positive infinity, right? I had a low and a high of 94 and 112. So this is just me writing an example, trying to show you how you would type in positive infinity if that was what you were asked. But again, it's not what we were asked right here, at least in, in this first part. Okay, so with that, Let's move a little bit this way and see if we can't figure out the probability that a randomly chosen child will be at least 110 centimeters tall. All right, so let's see if we can figure this one out. So I've still got heights here. We're going in centimeters. All right, I got X. I got a hundred, what was my mean? A hundred, right? And then you can see 110. I'm gonna scale this a bit, right? If we go one up, and two up, right? We've got 106, 112. And you can see 110 is in the middle of that, right? We don't have an exact integer for our z-scores in terms of 110, right? Because this is z-score of zero, this is z-score of one, this is a z-score of two. So this, this number z-score would be somewhere between one and two, but it's not exact. So the empirical rule doesn't apply here. So, I want the probability at least 110. So we have capital P with some stuff in parentheses, right? So I want a, this height to be at least 110. And we've talked about at least before. When you see at least, that gets swapped out with the symbol greater than or equal to. So I'm gonna start on my x-axis here and I'm gonna go to 110, which is about here, right? So I'll put 110. Oh, and again, I'm noticing I forgot to label my y-axis. There it is. If I got 110, greater than or equal to means I want to shade to the right. Okay. And we'll, we'll crunch this number on our calculator in just a bit, but let's get some gut feelings, right? This is pretty small, right? What is that, 4 or 5%? I'm not expecting too large of a number. All right. So in terms of the x-axis, if I were to just shrink this down to the x-axis, right? If this was just the x-axis, I'm starting at 110 and I'm going all the way to the right. So my high is positive infinity, right? The x-axis that I've shaded is from 110 to positive infinity. And I mention that because we're going to need it when we go to normal CDF. Can't use the empirical rule, I'm going normal CDF. So we're gonna go normal CDF. All right, our low on the x-axis was 110, our high, was infinity, but in our calculators, we're gonna type it in as 1E99. All right, our mean was 100, and our standard deviation was six. So let's crunch this, okay? So here we go, let me clear that out. We're gonna go normal CDF. We got 110, positive infinity. I've got a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of six. And when I hit enter, I'm really not expecting that large of a number. All right, and I got about 5%. That, that matches my graph, so I'm happy with that number. So we're looking at about 0.048. Okay. So crunching probabilities on any regular normal distribution is just the same as the standard normal distribution, except instead of putting a 0, 1 on these back two, these back two entries, we're gonna put whatever our mean and our standard deviation are, and they have to be given to you, okay? All right, so let's look at the last type of problem that you're gonna encounter in here, and this is what I call the backwards problem. And by backwards, what I, I'm trying to say here is, what if I give you a percent and ask you for a value of your variable, right? So I'm saying, find the 84th percentile, right? What's the 84th percentile for these kids um, in terms of their height. So let's let's scale and label this like always. All right, so we've got 100 here. All right, this is height in centimeters. We've got our x's. All right, I would like the 84th percentile. So when I say 84th percentile, I am asking what number here 
what would this number be? And I'm going to put a question mark because I don't know what it is just yet. But if I wanted 84% of my data to the left, right, from that value on down, what would it be? because percentiles, they are cumulative relative frequencies. So what height are these kids at if you're at, or what height puts you in the 84th percentile? I think you'd agree with me that it's gotta be over 100, right? You gotta be over the average. But let's see if we can figure this out. Now, we talked about it with the empirical rule, all right? What number, or excuse me, what z-score is exactly, or it gives you the 84th percentile? It's a z-score of one. Right? Whenever you are one deviation above the mean, you, you're at the 84th percentile. So if I wanted to go one deviation above the mean, well, if we remember here, this was, I had, ooh, that's, that parentheses almost looks like the number one. Let me be a little bit more distinct. All right, what I'm trying to say is we had a normal distribution with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of six. So this number would be 106, all right? So if I want the 84th percentile, I could say it was kids that were 106 centimeters tall. Okay. But I want to show you how you can do this on your calculator, especially when we get to something like the 40th percentile and it doesn't fall where the empirical rule is. So if I want to do it this way, we're going to use a new calculator function. All right, so I'm going to flip to the calculator, show you the, or the calculator on my computer, show you that, and then I will come right back. Hey Math43, I, I just want to show you this last little bit on how you can do what I call the backwards problems. And when I say backwards problems, that means I'm giving you a percent and asking you for a value of your variable. Right? By backwards, I mean, well, we just did this, this top part where I gave you two heights, asked you for a probability. Right? I gave you a height, asked you for a probability. That's the forward way, or at least what I call the forward way, where I give you a value of your variable and I ask you for a probability. You give me back a number between zero and one. So what happens when I give you the number between zero and one, but want the height value back, right? I wanna go backwards. I'm giving you the probability. You give me the value of your variable. So let's talk about that. I'm gonna go over to my key real quick. So if we were looking at finding this 84th percentile. How do we do that on our calculator? Well, there's a button for it. It's located in the same spot as normal CDF. So go into second and VARS and go to inverse norm this time. So at this point, I hope we're seeing never use number one. We won't use that in this class. Use normal CDF for the forward problems, right? When I give you a value of your variable and I ask you for a probability, use inverse norm when I give you a probability or a percentile and ask you for a value of your variable. So we're gonna use option three, and then there's always three things to put in. You put in your percentile, right? and you, got, you have to be careful. Your calculator will only handle percentiles. It can't handle middle 68, middle 95, or even middle 70, whatever the numbers are. It can only handle percentiles. I think the new fancy calculators actually can handle the middles, but for, for now, let's just, um, since we're not all on the new fancy calculators, let's make sure we're all converting things to percentiles. So I'll put zero, not zero, what was our mean? I think the kids, they had the heights of 100 for an average with a deviation of six. So when I do that, there it is, 105.967. All right, so that's, that's how we use inverse norm. Just put in the percentile, again, real clear, percentile, all right, from a number all the way down percentile, mean, standard deviation, and then don't forget your units. All right, thanks, bye. All right, so we just saw inverse norm. Let's just refresh our, our memory. So we got inverse norm, and you're always gonna put your percentile first, then your mean, then your standard deviation. Okay, so as I go to crunch this, we'll do inverse norm, and I'm hoping you're seeing now, when we're in the continuous variables, uh, or at least for the normals, either use two or three. Don't use one, we'll never use it. So we'll go inverse norm. I want the 84th percentile for children with an average height of 100 centimeters and a standard deviation of six. And we get 105.97, 105.97.
Right? That's actually even more accurate than our, our empirical rule guess. So 105.967. And again, the units are centimeters because this is a, this is a data point. This is a value of your variable. And I have that written here when we do what I call the backwards problems, all right? The backwards problems require inverse norm. You're given some kind of percentile, all right? And then you need to put in the mean and standard deviation. And I wrote here, add units to your answer. Because you're going backwards, you're giving me a value of your variable, all right? I gave you a percent, you gave me a height, all right? Where in all the previous types of problems, I gave you a height and you gave me a percent. All right, so let's use this and let's see if we can't find the 40th percentile. All right, so I'm going to draw a picture. And we've got, what, 100 here? And these are, again, heights in centimeters. Now I want the 40th percentile, which is going to be below the mean, but not too much below the mean. So I think it'll be somewhere around here. I'm going to put a little question mark. I don't know this number. I don't know this x value yet but I need 40% here. Okay. Now let me just start to get some gut feelings before I go crunch it, because I'm gonna use inverse norm in a moment, right? I was given a percentile, I'll go backwards and get a height value. But let's think about what this number would be. It's definitely below 100, but how far below? All right, so if we were at 100 here, oops, let me push this into view. If we were at 100 at the mean, you can see that if you go one deviation below the mean, you're already at the 16th percentile, right? And I only, I wanna be at the 40th. So I'm gonna be much closer to 100 than I am to 94, right? Because if I go all the way down to 94 over here, that number is the 16th percentile, and I want to stay at the 40th, so I'm going to be closer to 100 than I will to 94. And if you're wondering where I got 94, well, my standard deviation is 6, so if I lose a deviation, that's always the 16th percentile. So I, I would guess I'm at like 98, 99, if I had to guess. And I, I genuinely don't remember what the answer is. We'll calculate it in a moment, but I, I just wanted you to get some gut feelings in terms of how to run this. So if I go here, we're going to go inverse norm, put in your cumulative relative frequency or your percentile, right? And then put in your mean and put in your standard deviation. And let's see what we're going to get. All right, so I'll go second vars. We're going to go three. I'm going to go 0.4, 100, and six. Okay, so I said between 98 and 99. I mean, it really is. It's right in there. So. 98.480 and what you want to remember to do is put some units in right this is centimeters right that was our x variable units so make sure you put the units in all right so with that that wraps up chapters five and six so we've got a couple of youtube videos to watch if you want it's just other teachers talking about normal cdf and inverse norm but sometimes it's just good to hear another voice saying it. All right, and with that, we're gonna wrap that up. All right, thanks gang, see ya, bye.